Wealth is going to be right. Your family. Woo, Jesus. Shout, it's already all right. And I walk into my wealthy place right now. It's mine. It's been given. No, he won't do it. Tell him. He won't do it. He's already done it. You know, people say, won't he do it? No, he won't. Today on Living by Faith. To discern the two because wherever your spirit goes, your soul is going to go. Your body isn't going to always go where your spirit and soul will go. As a matter of fact, this is so good. Your soul can take off somewhere and leave your spirit and your body right where it is. Well, that doesn't mean you got it. No doubt about it. I am the master of repetition. I want to go over and over stuff to ensure that, first of all, you have received in the place that you should receive the information that I'm imparting. Amen. Got it? Your parents used to say, and some of you teenagers who are here, you will be able to attest to this fact that they have said the same thing over and over again. Did you say thank you? They get they say thank you. Mom, how many of you have been there before? Your mother or, or, or you have been the one who told your child the same thing over and over and they just kind of tired of you at this point? And you respond by saying, I just want you to know, baby. Amen. And if you don't know, okay, if you can't show, you don't know. I don't care how much you have heard love your enemies. If you're not loving them yet, you still need to hear it. Amen. I'm going on this side. So I may become even more now than I ever have been repetitive because repetition lends a lot of weight to retention. What, what I hear over and over again gives greater access to retaining what I've heard. And so, and so I may have said what I'm going to say today, last week, but be patient with me because if you're not doing it, you still haven't heard in the place that I'm trying to get this information to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do you understand? So tell your neighbor, say, he's going to repeat some stuff you may have heard. But don't get weary. Roll with it, rock with it, lean with it, whatever. I don't know. Dab on it. Because I don't know how many times I've told you to hang with those who have your answer and get away from those who got your problem. And some of y'all still with people who got your problem. It's apparent to me that I haven't said it enough. Whoever you hang with, greater you will soon become like. Then that can be a great thing, but that can be a depressing thing. You show me your friends, I can prophesy your future. And, and I'll be so glad, Jesus, I'll be glad, when this month is over, that means we're going to discontinue what we've been doing as far as winning our wives. But I don't have to oversee or look into Facebook to see who's doing what because of this contest. 
because I've discovered by looking at Facebook, I now know why some people who used to love me don't love me anymore because of who they're hanging with. That's real good teaching. That's real good stuff. Because when you partake of another man's offense, you know, people have started a church out of the people who got mad with me. Yeah. And they got mad Christian center going on right now. <laughs> and you got to be a bad boy to be able to start a church out of people who mad with you. Yeah. 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 I ain't scared of y'all. <laughs> Far country. Here we go. I am a spirit. I am. I am a spirit. I am. That's what I am. I am. Like who was Michael Jackson? I do. I do. Who was Michael Jackson? <laughs> See, my, 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 some of y'all don't know what this is. Most of y'all thinking pop star, artist, R&B, whatever. That's what he did. But who was he? And most people don't know who he was. You could clearly say he was Joe Jackson's son. Most people don't know who he was. No, and that's why you can't connect what you are doing with who you are. Because you can do something that you aren't. Like fornicate, that ain't you. God, dog. Mm, that ain't you. I told you, okay, you remember this? That you're going to meet somebody this year that's going to change the rest of your life. You remember that? Yes. Do I have to repeat that? Yes. Because some of y'all still ain't looking for them. You should get up every single day. Are you the one? Every single day. That's, I'm going to meet somebody. You need to mutter. You need to ruminate. You need to muse because that's the stratagem inside of what God has literally set up for everybody who's the blood-bought, blood-washed child of the Most High God. That is the stratagem. That is God's devised plan. It's his ability. It's his craftiness to give to you to overcome the evil one. Okay, listen to this. Just because you give a man the office of the pastor doesn't mean he is. Amen. And a lot of people want to be called that, but they aren't that. Okay, let's just break it down. Let's come to your house. You call yourself husband. Why y'all looking at me like that? Theron, I'm coming around. We're going to get to the good part. Hunter neighbor said, we're going to get to the good part. That, that, that's a husband right here. This man I'm standing right in front of, that's, that's a husband. Well, he was a husband. He's no longer a husband now. <clears throat> He's my father, but he was a husband. He may be a husband again, because I see how fly he's been looking since my mama been gone. <laughs> I got my eye on him. My sister got my eye on him. And he's available. Just submit all your applications to me. <laughs> We're going to go through them one by one. <laughs> he said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I love my father. You did a great job, sir. 65 years right here. And did it like it's supposed to be done until death do you part. So just because they are calling you something, say, but I know Come on, talk to me. But I know, I, know. I, am a spirit. I am a spirit. Okay? Say, I have, I have a, soul. a soul. No, no, say it, say it. Say it like you understand. Say, I have, I have a, soul. a soul. Say, I'm a spirit. I'm a spirit. I, have I have a soul. A soul. That's what you have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like you may have money. Yeah. Right? Or you may have a house. Yeah. You're not the money. You're not the house. 
You have that. You have a soul. You are a spirit. I know you heard this before, but just bear with me. You are a spirit. You have a soul. And you live in the body. You got it? If, if you understand, Carl, if you understand the makeup of man, and you know you are a spirit, and you, you have a soul, and, and you live in the body, you will never, Curtis, confuse you with your body. Because I'm not my body. That's the way it ought to be earned. Y'all don't remember that? Am I that old? I don't sound nowhere like it. <laughs> Y'all don't know that? What was that, the stylistic, the Dale Bonnet? Yeah. Don't you wing it on the be heard. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Soul generation? Didn't I sound like it, Karen? Aw, lied to me. <laughs> I sound, huh? I sound sort of. No. Whoever said no. That's the way it ought to be. Oh, that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it's got to be. Okay, okay, that ain't my lesson. Donnie's no, Donnie's no what it is. That's the way it got to be, ain't it right, Donnie? Bonnie and people even align the makeup of man wrong. They even go body, soul, and spirit is left out. And you are a spirit. How are you going to leave me out of the makeup of man and just put up two parts? And if you don't understand, see, I got to move you into another dimension because when we're talking about denying ourselves, what are we really talking about? So I am a spirit. Say that, I am a spirit. I am a spirit. Say, I have a soul. I have a soul. And I live in the body. And I live in the body. My body is like the car I get in. That car ain't going to move until I get in it. I'm the operator of my car. And once my car give out, I'm not going to have a possession going to the, 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 the junkyard behind my car. I'm going to let my car go because that car served the purpose it was supposed to serve. And I left my car. And to be absent from your car is to be in the presence of God. Are you getting what? I'm just trying to, there's nothing, there's nothing deep about pastor. I teach in such simplicity that you're going to have to hire someone to help you not understand. <laughs> So like when my mama jumped out of her body, she left that thing. I ain't gonna follow that thing, I'm gonna go with my mama. And some of y'all spend all this money. I saw somebody on Facebook had this huge tombstone. Man, you could sit on that thing over top of the body. You could sit on that thing. It had, and I was looking, I'm going to wonder how much that cost. You could have taken that money and given to me so I could buy a pocketbook. <laughs> I'm saying, take the money and put it in a worthy cause like a D's house or missions or something that literally is going to increase and perpetuate the legacy of the loved one. From ashes we came and from ashes, and I don't know why you're trying to throw some loot on the ashes. It is not your loved one. My mama has never seen a casket. My mama, no mama, they've never been in a casket. My mama has never been in the grave. My mama hadn't been to the graveyard. The minute my mama decided to leave the vehicle that she was riding in, she went straight to Revelation 21. I, my prayer is that this assists you in going to another place in your thinking because as a man think in his heart, so is he. All right? What are you? What do you have? And you live? Okay, you are? You have? 
and you live. You are. A spirit. You have. A soul. And you live. In a body. Okay, you live. In a body. That's good. You have. A soul. But you live. In a body. But you are. A spirit. You have. A soul. You are. A spirit. Where you live. In a body. But you have. A soul. And you live. In a body. And you are. A spirit. You're a good class. <laughs> Turn to him and say, he couldn't shake me. He couldn't shake me. <laughs> I was trying. Your spirit is the real you. You are not your soul. You have one. Soul and spirit, the Bible says, it takes the word of God to discern the two because wherever your spirit goes, your soul is going to go. Your body isn't going to always go where your spirit and soul will go. As a matter of fact, this is so good. Your soul can take off somewhere and leave your spirit and your body right where it is. Okay, see if I get this right. Your body's here with me. I, did I get that right? Finish it. Okay. You're messing me around. Ooh, ooh. Have you seen her? Does that go with that song? No. Oh. It should. Because you can be sitting right here and gone. You ever been talking to somebody? And you got to get their attention, hey. And they say, where were you? Oh, man, I was thinking about, they, the body and the spirit is right there, but their soul gone. Why is their soul gone? Because their thoughts are in a separate place. It's a dangerous thing. That's what I think the, the American Negro something slogan saying, a mind. You let your mind run off with drugs, or you let your mind run off with alcohol, you let your mind run off with greed, you let your mind run off with lust and desires, you let your mind run, your body could be sitting right in church and you thinking about your side chick. <laughs> Somebody say, that ain't right. <laughs> your mind. So, but <clears throat> that's why the Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? What can a man give in exchange, in exchange for his thinking? We're going to put all this together in a moment. You'll see it. You'll see this soul simulator. So we have transitioned from the denying yourself portion of this particular lesson, and there have been many subtitles that have gone along with this lesson. Stick with me. Don't look for any entertainment in no side show. We ain't going to be jumping and running and spinning and spinning. You got to learn something. If you can learn something about your thinking, it'll change your living. Yes. Yes. If I can change my thinking, I can change my living. Say that. If I can change my thinking, I can change my living. And where you are right now is a byproduct of how you've been thinking in the past. And you are insane to think that there's going to be some change if you don't think differently than you've been thinking in the past. If you keep thinking the way you've been thinking, you're going to keep having what you've been having. But if you can change the way you've been thinking, like I said, in the midst of change, there must be a little of discomfort involved in change because when change takes place, it moves you from a comfort zone that you become comfortable in from the previous way that you've been thinking. But when you start thinking differently, it makes a demand on every other part of your life to move and and you're going to be uncomfortable from the initial start of that, but that comfort zone will be the next level comfort zone that you move from because you've been thinking that way for so long. Yes, sir. 
You understand what I'm saying? You ever been exercising and you got to a point where you plateaued and the same regiment that you started off with was uncomfortable, but now you've been doing it so long that that thing you used to complain about is now something you can do without thinking. Now when they bring that treadmill up or three more notches in the incline, your soul is going crazy like, man, we ain't been doing this. <laughs> If you stay with it, the same soul that was stretched to the next level will be stretched to that level and leave that, ooh, Jesus. How many of y'all know I used to shack? Y'all know what shacking is? Well, certainly he knows. I had this little chick. Oh, I was shacking. Don't tell Dr. D. I was shacking with this chick. And I called my mama one day, I said, Mom, because I've always liked nice stuff aesthetically. You can, the decorum, you come to my house, you see, it. I, like, I decorated my entire house. Dr. D let me have it. So I, I love nice things. I like, I like manicure everything. I mean, I mean my hands, feet, I, I'm, 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 what a metro, what, what, what does that mean? Metrosexual, what, what does that mean? You, you, you put too much, I, I just like to look nice. I, I ain't one of these thug guys, anything I do. I ain't, I, you understand, you, you got the thuggers look. I, I, I don't want to be a bad boy like that. But I got to, you, you, okay, I know how to go there. <laughs> okay, whatever. That's why we're capable of having a ministry in Howard County and a ministry right up against Southeast and a ministry right out here in Brandywine. <laughs> the upper to middle class people. <laughs> because I can go hood on you, and, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so just stick with me. Okay, what was I talking about? Soul. Your soul, shacking. You, you, ain't, you ain't let that shacking thing go, you just. <laughs> I used to be a shacker. See, that's why I got to tell you all the truth, especially those who are shacking, but I put myself in the same position. I ain't studying you, you shacking now. I ain't studying you, studying you. I, I'm not thinking about you. So what, you shacking right now? So what? I don't see you as a shacker. I see you as God sees you. And Jeremiah, watch this. I told you all that the person that you're going to meet may be you. Mm. God. Mm. You know how when you get a good word, you say, mm. you remember how you used to smoke weed and say, <coughs> <laughs> oh, y'all know that. Oh, I forgot, this is brandy wine. If I was down by Southeast, everybody say, yeah, Pastor, we know what you're saying. Let me see. Horror in every monger, in every sense of the word. I know what it means to be a hoe. <laughs> so don't try to play the whole game on me. I can go there too. Don't try to play the weed game on me. Don't try to play that. I can go pretty much. I've been, uh, I've been in some bad places. <laughs> so, so I, uh, I said, Mama, uh, come see my house. Had a little eight hundred square foot uh, apartment laid out. I put, some, I put some graphic stuff on the walls. I paint. That's when we was lining tape on the wall and you have all these abstract kind of, y'all know, know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Painting them different colors. You walk in there like, man, who did that me? <laughs> so I was, I was so full of myself. I, I, I was enjoying it, and I picked up the phone. I said, hey, Mom, how you doing? She said, I'm doing fine, baby. How are you? She know I'm shagging. I said, fine, I'm doing good. I said, hey, Mom, won't you come see me? My place is so nice out here. She said, I believe you, baby, because you're nice. You do everything nice like that. That's what you did when you were here, and I'm sure it looked nice. But I don't come to the house of shackers. <laughs> <laughs> My mama had a mindset. See, 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 she could love me in her spirit, but her mind was the place where her standards were established. And when your standards go up, you're going to go up. But that's established in your soul. 
The reason why he treats you like that because you think like that about yourself. And when you meet yourself, you're going to find out you ain't what he called you. You are what God says about you. Some of y'all coming out today. You coming out today. So dig this. Dig this. Go to 11. Certain man had two sons. Two connotes or denotes that there is now a, there's a, there's a distinguishing, there's a difference. I wonder why he said two sons, and I discovered he said two sons because in God's house there are many different sons and they reflect many different dispositions and attitudes because I wonder how we read out of the same book and we have different thoughts. Thank you for viewing Living by Faith. If you would like to obtain a copy of today's lesson or any other featured item, please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. He thought about it. He talked about it. He thought about it. And he got up. If you keep talking, talking about and thinking about your success, there's going to be a day you're going to get up. God, dog, I can, I can run, glory to God. You're going you're gonna to keep talking about your wealth. You're going to keep thinking about your wealth, and you're going to get up. What an awesome time it is to be a woman in the body of Christ. Why? Because I have something planned just for you. Something so invigorating, something so exciting, something that's going to be so amazing that you will not want to miss. God's Glamorous Girls is coming July the 11th through the 13th. You want to be in Baltimore because it is going down. The Fellowship presents God's Glamorous Girls. I'm inviting all of you to come and be a part of it. We have some amazing artists that are going to be there. We have some awesome speakers that are going to be there ministering to you. And I want to see you there. I want to touch you. I want to feel you. I want you to know that I care about you. So I need to see you so I can communicate that with you. See you there July the 11th through the 13th in Baltimore. to experience a move of God like never before. God's decree, yes indeed. Things are gonna happen so fast, it's gonna make your head swim. It says that you're not gonna be able to keep up. And I am expecting God to do a quick work in here. Some of you came in here, you need healing, you need deliverance, you need salvation, you need a friend, you need love. You just need to know that the mercy of God exists for you. Whatever you need in this place this week, I guarantee you that you won't leave here the same way that you have come in, in the name of Jesus. If you're ever in the Washington or Baltimore metropolitan areas, we invite you to worship with us at one of our Saturday evening or Sunday morning services. Please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540.